My name is Vanessa, if we haven't met before. I'm part of our training team here at 2020, so super excited that you're spending a few minutes with me. Today's presentation for Let's Get Tipsy, I had to have a little fun with it, right? Because traditionally at trade shows, there's some after hours events. So sorry if we're not quite there yet with a drink in hand, but we can pretend for a second. <laughs> the first thing we wanna do though, is we're gonna take a little bit of time and set up our projects, talk about a couple popular features there. We need to really dig into the details of our projects. So I'd love to show you some shortcuts and things with notes and labels. And then I'm going to hit back on presentations. So even if you were in the previous session, I have a few more things to consider when we're presenting to a client. So let's make sure that this runs fast. I'm going to shut my video off for just a little bit and let's jump right back over. Okay, so first thing was setting up our project. My goal in these next couple tips is I hope to make you click less right? We want speed. We want to be able to do things really efficiently. And our software has a lot of capability when it comes to designing quickly. So the first thing I want to mention is if I go out to our website, out on 2020spaces.com, um, there is a whole page out here where you can see all of the catalogs that we work with. And I'm going to show this in the software too in a second, but the thing to take away from this, look at this list. It's insane. There's so many different manufacturers, and you may be working with a small subset of these, but it's amazing that so many different manufacturers work closely with us, and that's just like half the list that I previewed right there. But when you see that list in 2020, notice that you could get to your catalogs a couple different ways. So if you have a catalog that's installed in the software, um, I'm going to go to my preferences, and I'm going to change a quick setting under catalogs which allows me to organize this by manufacturer, as well as when you go into a, a very specific catalog, you can also set it as the default. So when you're working with primary lines, this again, I'm gonna hopefully make it a little easier to click to. Next time I open the software, it would open right up to that Nobelia One catalog that I have installed. Okay, now that's a local catalog. I wanna also show our cloud catalogs. Cloud catalogs are those that if you have access to the cloud browser in our newer versions of our software, notice that now I can get to a lot of my cabinet manufacturers this way. But again, the list is long, so let's simplify that. I'm going to go back into a similar catalog like the Nobelia, and I just click the star. So by favoriting it, it pushes it up to the list instead of showing it alphabetically. The other cool thing is if I work with multiple lines, I can favorite more than one. So by stepping in here, I can favorite decor cabinets and notice now the two of them are at the top of my list, making it much easier to get to them super fast, right? Now in your version, if you don't see kitchen cabinet catalogs yet, it's because I'm using 2020 Design Live. That is a function of our live software where you can access the kitchen cabinetry catalogs on demand. It's like streaming Netflix. Cool. Now, Again, 2020 Design Live, if you don't already have it, um, you can upgrade to live for free or migrate to live for free. Uh, more details on that at 2020spaces.com slash migrate. While we're at those beginning stages, you notice I had just opened up a design that was a blank floor plan. Let me take you through a little bit of a journey of thinking about that first step of capturing your floor plan, but without 2020. Okay, kind of crazy, but I'm going to jump over and we're going to look at an app real quick that works with 2020. It's called Magic Plan. So in that little tablet on the left-hand side that you see, that's actually me capturing a space. Um, it's a really cool tiny house out in Sedona, Arizona. And right now I'm leveraging the camera on my iPad. So you can do this with any tablet or phone. And it lets you quickly draft out the space, but in 3D. Now, I know that some of you are probably looking at that and going, yeah, okay, Vanessa, there's no way that that's accurate. Like, is it really the right dimensions? The really cool thing about this app, Magic Plan, is that it can sync to a Bluetooth laser measure device. So you can either go in and kind of edit it. In this case right now, I'm adding some more architectural details like windows, but I can adjust the wall sizes and the window sizes either manually um, or I can grab my laser measure. If my laser measure has a Bluetooth option, that's what allows it to sync to Magic Plan. So pretty neat. 
Now, that laser measure would probably look something like this. This is actually the one that I have. I have a Stanley. I want to say I got it off Amazon for like $50. So it's a pretty reasonable investment for the accuracy that it gives you. Then from there, if you're measuring a space with that app, you simply export it and it allows you to click a button right inside 2020 to import it. So I can grab that real quick from the file menu, bring it in. You can see there's my layout. I'd added a couple more doors and windows to it, but it acts as if I drew it from scratch. I can pull up elevations. I could look at this in 3D in a second and I can add product to it or continue to edit it too. So these obviously are like quick little recordings to give you an idea of what it can do. Um, we have a whole a few different knowledge base articles about this, so you can check out the Knowledge Center for those, but kind of an, a cool way to um, get the project started pretty quickly. So we integrate with Magic Plan. Now, instead of going the Magic Plan route, let's go into a design that I already have started. So I'm back in 2020 Design Live, and you can see my list to open files is kind of long. I can find any of my recovery files here quick too, but in the newer versions, notice you can also pin a file. So a pinned file is like the projects that you're working on right now, the ones that are top of your list, top of the pile of to-dos, right? So here's what that space looks like. If I need to open it, work on it, anytime I go back to the file menu, I can quickly get back to that file because it's pinned to the top. When you're done with this project, you can unpin it, okay? So that's a really simple, small trick, but I find that just saves me a ton of time so I don't have to go look for those darn files. Okay, when we get back into that design though, Let's talk a little bit about the details, okay? Because that, at the end of the day, is where we can actually be profitable. We want to make sure we don't make any mistakes. So a couple of things I can do, let's jump back in 2020. I'm going to search for a quick piece, uh, just a base 30, drag and drop it in. Did you know that you can just click your arrow keys to move an item? It moves 12 inches at a time. Or if you hit your shift plus an arrow key, it moves it one inch at a time. Imagine if I did that to my island, I can grab the whole thing, bring it over here, and then literally hit my right arrow, and it marches 12 inches at a time to the right, okay? making it much, much easier for quick placement, but accurate. I can also go into products, and let's talk a little bit about the notes here. When I go to the notes tab, I can add some details about it. Okay, we'll just, okay we need to note something to our installer. But if I check place note on exit and say okay, it adds the note to the floor plan. The cool thing about that is now it's in the product, so it will report on it, but it's also in my floor plan, so I don't have to type it again. Last cool new thing, this is a very new feature in the annotations ribbon. Did you notice I clicked on the different uh, label placement and I can adjust it so everything reads one direction. That's actually an NKVA standard, making it just a lot easier than flipping the page a hundred times, you know, for the poor installers that are trying to read everything that we've put in a plan. Much, much easier. All right, moving on into presentation. This is the one that I'm probably going to have the most tips on because I feel like there's so many cool things you can do in here. But the first thing we want to take a look at is something that actually resonates from this rendering particularly. I love this rendering. I just adore the space because, well, you're only getting a sneak peek of it, but you can just imagine a really cool design. But look closely at the accessories. Do you notice like the cutting boards, the plants, the, these things on the countertop? They look really cool because it adds a, a really nice element, you know, color, texture, shape, all of the design principles that we probably learned way back when. Um, but realistically, would you put a plant there? Probably not, <laughs> but it's okay because this design was actually um, submitted into our Design Inspiration Awards that we ran last fall. This, uh, Brittany is an amazing designer and just the composition of this presentation is super impressive. So you might look at that and go, well, Vanessa, I don't have time to do all that. Like there's a lot of extras and things on there. So let's talk about that time. I'm gonna go back into the software. We're gonna go take a quick peek uh, for where those products were actually found, okay? So when I go over to the cloud browser, you'll notice that I can hit the drop down and go to our decorative items. And when I'm in there, I can simply scroll through and search, but that will take forever. Um, I can look through the list, which I might find something, but most of the time I'm gonna type in here. So let me type plant, okay? So now I can look through here again, 
or I might even change the view to display the grid, which is just a little quicker visual. Um, and then I can actually see some of those different plants, kind of similar to what we just saw on Brittany's rendering, okay? Now, let me step back and think about, okay, a different item. I'm gonna go and type in cutting board. So we had that other scenario or the cutting boards in that example. And notice when I come through here, if I find one I really like, I can favorite it, kind of like I favorited a catalog earlier. We'll come back to the favorite in a second. Uh, but I also like to come down to information sometimes, tells me more about it, but a lot of times I click on this little I, the information button, because what that does is it opens up a website. Let me pull that from my other screen. And you can actually browse through all of those decorative items from our website. So let that load. Okay, there they are. And then same thing, I can either look through the list quick or I'm going to type something in like what we just did with our cutting board. Okay, so finding them this way, I, sometimes I feel is just a little bit easier because you can see it, bigger screen, there's that cutting board we were just talking about. Um, you can also suggest additional things in here. You just sign in with your 2020 account and you can tell us like, what are we missing? Is there something that you'd like to place in your spaces more often? Help us uh, build out that list. So let's come in and let's look at, if I'm in that catalog and I just go to my favorite, if there's certain ones that you love to use, like that cutting board or mm, some pizza, or we're gonna get tipsy with our wine glasses, right? We can take these and drag and drop them in in any design just by going to the catalog, grabbing favorites, pulling it in, and then just as quick as that, next time I go to render this, it will come in with that decorative item. So don't be intimidated by these extras because they, there are some really fast ways to leverage them through the cloud now, right? Now, the other thing we are gonna wanna consider within some of our spaces is color, right? So many of our spaces, and I'm probably preaching to the choir, I know you've probably done a million and one white shaker kitchens, right? But let's pretend for a second we have a client that really desires color. What are some fast ways we can present quick color features? Let's go back into our design and take a look right now I have a couple uh, views already saved, so you can kind of see if I look from the bottom left corner, you can tell my wall color is like this dark neutral, okay, which is fine, but let's mix it up a little bit. I said we wanted color. So if I come back and I go into the materials, here's that color. It's actually a Sherwin-Williams, the adaptive shade, which you can pull Sherwin-Williams color anytime from the textures Sherwin-Williams section. But um, if that's a real big favorite of yours, you can right click on it and put that right in your user texture library, meaning that adaptive shade color will always be in this list so you can pick it fast. That's a super, super huge time saver. Um, now, in this case, I didn't really change anything. It's really still going to be the same color, but let's pretend we want to change it to something completely different. Okay, let me minimize this. And do you guys know the, the color of the year from Pantone? I'm going to grab this website. You've probably seen these. They announced these two colors, uh, the ultimate gray and the illuminating yellow. So how could I bring these in the fastest? I'm gonna go in to user texture library. I'm gonna look for the little eyedropper and literally drag that little eyedropper, let go on the color. I just brought in the gray. Okay, I'll name it just so I remember that it's the illuminating Pantone gray, right? and save that away. You can even change the appearance if you have different um, finishes, like you want it to be shinier or matte. For now, I'll leave it, but then let's do the same thing. I'll eyedropper the illuminating yellow. We're gonna get real bright with that one, but just wanna show how fast that can be. So pick your favorite, whatever vendor you work with, run out to their website and you can pull those finishes in so fast. If I go take a look right now, it's gonna be a completely different feeling space because hello we've got our lovely yellow and then of course if i come back and say mm, sorry client is not too fond of that too bright we can jump right back into our textures and go grab the gray as a contrast so just an idea the eyedropper is a really cool way to get back we'll go back to our presentation and take a peek there she is in the gray on the wall. Okay. Now, as I'm going through all these different scenarios, one last little tip in here, you'll notice that 
Let's make this max size again so we can see everything. All right, looks good. I'm gonna jump into the countertop. And right now the countertop is set to a Wilson Art, which is a dark finish. But if I go over to catalog textures, I'm gonna show you another one of my favorites. Under laminates, under work surfaces, under Elvic. Now there's a bunch of different brands. So if you haven't seen these, check them out. But under Elvic and Lux, I'm going to check out this high gloss. And there is a really nice like white and gray look. Now this is an actual product, but the reason I pointed out is because I feel like every brand now has like a white and gray look where this one happens to have a bit of a sheen, so it will reflect a lot of light. You can kind of see the reflection of the tile and such. Um, but if you're looking for something that just repeats really well, and again, showing just a basic color, that's a, a pretty cool one to jump in. Last little thing while I'm in this design, notice the file name at the top. It says L shape with kitchen, or sorry, with island. If I come in and I hit my control plus my L key, notice what I did is it changed the name same name, carrot one. What that allows you to do, control L is like a quick save as, and it automatically renames it. I just did it again, control L and it does a carrot two. See how I have versions of the same kitchen. So if your client comes back and says, I want an L shape island, or I'd like to see it with two levels on the island. Sometimes you're like saving file after file after file after file. Control L, fastest way to do that. It's pretty cool. All right, so like I mentioned, there's a lot of tips that we talked about today. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me this afternoon. Thanks, everybody.